Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing one of the strangest, if not the strangest, gamma ray bursts ever detected. An extremely powerful emission of energy, actually the most powerful emission of energy in the modern universe, that in this case sort of defies a lot of rules we have about these objects, and seems to be very different from anything else we've ever seen. So different as a matter of fact, that at least five separate papers have already been released about it, trying to figure out exactly what it is that we've just observed. And so in this video, we're going to be discussing a little bit more about this unusual phenomenon, or this unusual observation that's currently referred to as GRB 211211A, with the numbers in this case indicating the date of detection, December 11th, 2021. But more specifically, talk about the unusual parts of this observation, and what the scientists believe might have actually created this event, or at least what could have been responsible for these emissions. But I guess first, so what exactly is a GRB? Now many of you might already be familiar with this, but in case you weren't, just in short, in essence these are the most powerful explosions in the universe, very often being much brighter than any supernova or even the galaxy where they are coming from. But because these are bursts, they obviously do not last very long. The most powerful part of the burst can actually only last for several seconds, with the less powerful afterglow sometimes lasting for several days. Here's one from 2021 as well, for example. And generally, they are divided into two main categories. We have the short duration GRBs and the long duration GRBs. Both seem to have slightly different origin. Now in general, these events will always signify some kind of a major explosion of a star or some kind of a star-like object. Essentially a transition stage from being an actual star to, for example, a neutron star, or from a neutron star to a black hole. And in case of long GRBs, or the ones that last much longer, they emit much more energy and are created by very massive stars suddenly exploding, very often producing these two jets coming from two directions, and then as these jets interact with the outer shell of the star or the material around the star, they actually release a lot of other frequencies as well. And so additional frequencies such as X-ray, visible light, radio light and so on, all of this comes later, but the initial light will always be gamma rays with these gamma rays essentially starting as this, huge emissions coming from within the star. And this is something we've seen quite a lot and something that the scientists understand pretty well. In the end, what's left behind is usually some kind of a black hole, at least 10 solar masses in mass. But what we're actually seeing is basically this, it's from just the right perspective, from just the right direction. And so that's the long GRBs, but then we also have short GRBs that have a very different origin. In this case, it's almost always two neutron stars. It's a neutron star merger that then releases a lot of energy all at once, and also produces what's known as a kilonova, an extremely powerful explosion. So far, every case of neutron star explosion resulted in a major GRB coming toward us, and has already been associated with major gravitational waves as well. But all of this happens really fast, usually in less than two seconds, and also results in a black hole at the end as well. In general, these produce less energy and are also more difficult to see and are more faint. And so for many decades now, the scientists have been detecting both of these and were thus able to understand what's happening around these stars, depending on the length of the GRB itself. As a matter of fact, quite a lot of them has already been discovered so far, and pretty much all of them are either one of these two events. But now the scientists have discovered something that doesn't really fit into this category. An event that seems to be either a hybrid or something entirely different. Now the original detection did not really look different, as a matter of fact it was categorized as a typical short GRB, but further observations started to discover something we've never seen before. It was actually glowing again, and glowing much longer than before, with the total duration being approximately 70 seconds. Now normally this would be considered to be a long GRB, but in this case it was divided into two parts. A very hard spike approximately 13 seconds long, and a much softer emission for approximately 55 seconds represented in this graph right here. And this was observed by several telescopes in different parts of the night skies and confirmed by a lot of observatories. On top of this, instead of showing us some kind of a supernova-like emission, as we expect from, for example, a long GRB, instead it was showing us what seemed to resemble a kilonova, similar to what happens when two neutron stars collide. And so it was some kind of a hybrid GRB that we've never seen before and nobody had any explanation for what was being observed. And so right away, a few papers started to come out, trying to mathematically figure out what could possibly create this, and trying to use simulations to confirm the results. And at least for now, it looks like they might have figured it out 
without breaking any rules of physics. The scientists now believe that it could be the first ever observed collision between a neutron star and possibly some kind of a white dwarf. In this case, an object very similar to what we have near us, Sirius B, and what our sun is going to become in the future as well. And this collision, in theory, could have produced both the GRB and the afterglow observed in this particular region. Now, the intermediate density of a white dwarf, basically density between a typical star and a typical neutron star, would maybe explain why the emissions from this GRB were somewhat intermediate as well. They weren't too long, they weren't too powerful, they were kind of in between. But more intriguingly, there's a chance that instead of leaving behind a black hole, in this case, the leftover was actually what's known as a magnetar. A ridiculously powerful neutron star that we already think is responsible for a lot of other mysteries of the universe, including things like fast radio bursts, and including a lot of other very powerful emissions as well. But because in this case this event happened about 1.1 billion light years away from us, it's going to be kind of difficult to do a follow-up to see what actually happened here. Nevertheless, the preliminary discovery does suggest that a neutron star created some kind of a magnetar, and it also suggests that some of the materials created here are very similar to a typical kilonova, specifically elements like iodine that we believe is essential for production of life on planet Earth. And so in some sense, this event actually shows us that a lot of elements that are essential for life here could have been created by a kilonova somewhere in the Milky Way billions of years ago, and actually possibly was a result of either two neutron stars or a neutron star and a white dwarf colliding in a very similar way. And so in that sense, this particular event is also important for trying to understand how exactly various elements were formed in the galaxy and how some of these elements arrived to planet Earth or were delivered by planet Earth by various events. But I guess for now, before we can actually make any more assumptions or create more theories, the scientists have to discover another similar event with very similar observations. Once it's found and once the scientists can identify another collision between a white dwarf and a neutron star that produces something very similar, we can then start making conjectures about exactly what this was. Until then though, unfortunately, it's always speculation and just an initial observation, and it's going to remain a mystery for at least a few years. Very intriguing event, very exciting event, but what exactly happened here is still not entirely clear. But there are five separate papers trying to discuss this, and you can find all of them in the description below. On that note, once the scientists figure out what's happening, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, check out previous videos on a similar topic in the description below, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the one full person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.